the grandfather was one of those 5,000 Greeks that came over um, to work the mines and the railroads here in, in the West. And the uh, heritage of the Greek heritage, I, uh, I do love it. Uh, it was something passed on by my, my, my family. Uh, the, one, the nice thing about this particular, I am associated with the, um, the Mining Museum, Ethnic and Mining Museum out of Magna, the uh, tracking the ethnicity of all the miners is, is part of that project. We, the, the nice thing about the kind of genealogy I do, I'm not a genealogist, I, uh, I'm an engineer, and I don't speak Greek, and to do the kind of genealogy that I'm suggesting that you might be considering, you don't have to speak Greek. You don't have to read Greek. And in fact, all the records that I use are in English. And, uh, and so there's some real benefits there. Uh, obviously, it limits how far I go back. But to a lot of people, you know, your local family is, is, your, is your history, is your family history. You want, I'm talking to people, they want to track what you know, their cousins, cousins' children, you know, they don't remember. You know, my grandchildren's children don't know what my great, what my grandfather did, why he came over. Um, we've had a hundred years now of the of the Greeks that have come over, and um, and so there's there's plenty of things that um, we would like to pass on to our children. You know, for example, this is part of the display for the Rumpus family out in our museum. Uh, to Paul Rumpus, he was one of the people that asked me to get involved with uh, putting together Greek records of the Greek community here. You know, he said, I, I wanna track those things that, um, that are important to pass on to my, my children and my grandchildren. I wanna show them certain pictures that are important, a, you know, a brief family history of my family uh, while they were in, uh, occupied Germany, I mean, while well, Germany occupied uh, their home. And um, then I wanna show what's happened to them since, a family tree of, you know, here's, my, here's Paul's parents and his brothers and their children so he can remember who his grandchildren are and his, and his nephews, et cetera. So it's a different, it's a different part of uh, family history and genealogy, but to a lot of people, it's, it's something that you can do and you should do, and, and we have a ways now, free, inexpensive uh, ways to store that kind of information. You don't even have to go to the museum. Any of that kind of information, those photographs, those stories, you really ought to be preserving nothing more permanent than in Ancestry.com and FamilySearch. Those things will be here longer than the monuments. As, uh, and so those are the things we do wanna, where you wanna get that information. Um, and I'm going to advocate that you do two things. Yes, do your family, but I'm going to show you something where you also do your community tree. We talked, in fact, you mentioned me earlier that um, there was, that the, the Grievous, uh, Grievous have been in, over in England, or no, I'm sorry, over in, over in Greece, and they, they were in a record, so they found records for a village, and they did all the records for that village not just their family, but all the records for that community. That's what I'm doing. All the records for a particular community. Now, the community is not a village in this case. The community may be a mining town in the middle of Wyoming, in the middle of, of uh, Utah. All the records for that mining town, I, I'm, I'm collecting and going through and finding all the Greeks that we're at that mining town, and I'm combining those records into families, into linked families. So that's what we're doing. Um, I gotta make sure that I know how much time I have so I don't go over. Oh, I'll, I'll give you a half time. You, you'll give me a 10, okay. All right, so, uh, so if we look at this, yes, they came over from Greece, you know, a beautiful Mediterranean island. You know, my grandfather was a shepherd out there on the island, and uh, hey, go, go to America and get rich, and next thing he knows, He's underground out in Wyoming, whatever that was, in a, in a, you know, in a coal mine. Can you imagine what, what, you know, this is America, what was I thinking of? All the, you know, the, I hope they thought, well, I, I kept out of the wars and 
So maybe that's why I, I came there. As it turned out, he ended up joining the army just to keep out of, <laughs> just to get out of the, the, uh, the mine. So it was kind of a, a lost effort. Uh, a lot of them did come. They were hired by a, a labor contractor and distributed to the different mining camps and railroad camps here in the West. They, you know, this, this guy got rich because he got a quarter or whatever it was every month from the, you know, from getting, his contract was to get all the labor to build the railroad and to build mines and do the mining. So he did great. And if the mainland Greeks went on strike, that's no problem. He'd go over and bring in all the Cretans because they were cheaper anyway. And I literally think he just set up a, uh, like set up a table there in the near Hanya down in, uh, on, on the coast there of Crete and told everybody, hey, you want to get out of going to the wars? You want to get rich? Come on, come with me. I'll you go work in America for a couple of years. You get rich, and uh, yeah, you can come back and you know give your 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 sister some dowries and stuff like this, and it'll be a great thing. And it didn't work out that way for most of them. As it turned out, they they didn't get rich. Not only that, but uh, certain things like wars got in the way. Uh, World War One came, and they didn't uh, uh, you know they, they weren't married, so a lot of them were just single men. Then they said, well, I'm gonna be here for a while longer. I've got all these girls around. And, and so some of them started marrying non-Greek. Uh, non like, and that's what happened to my family. And of course, as soon as that happened, so I had my Greek grandfather marries an LDS grandmother and both families get ostracized. They can't get along. They have to run down to Price and work the coal mines down in Price. <laughs> yeah, pretty standard. And, uh, and, and so they're here in the middle of Utah. And in fact, the, the, combined, the mining communities that if you're going to do a community tree, Price, you know, my, my grandfather worked there, the Bingham Canyon mine, the Magna Garfield smelter, uh, where they process the ore from the Bingham mine, the um, Greek town, right down Salt Lake City, my grandfather, you know, had a dairy that started selling to the Greek restaurants here. And so he was part of Greek town. And then of course up in Ogden where they're doing the railroad. So it made sense, you know, we've got these communities and of course the Greeks wanted to live with Greeks. They lived in Greek communities and they spoke Greek and they, initially they weren't even interested in learning English because, hey, they were gonna go back. So it was, uh, it's appropriate to think of these is almost like little villages out in the middle of nowhere because as far as intermarrying the people around you, they married the other Greeks in the community. And so that makes it much easier to start linking families together since they have, they have that common bond. They were all gonna be associated with the same, uh, you know, the same church. So start a Greek community tree, you just pick a community. And basically, you're going to say who was living in that community using the federal census records from 1940. So you were living in this community in 1940, and you said you were born in Greece. That's the basic criteria. Okay, so if I, choose, if I do a, a search that way, nowadays with the computers, hey, it's easy to do that kind of a search. I don't have to read books or dusty books that go through Greek records. I can just I can go on ancestry.com or or family search, and I can do a search that says exactly that the birth, I'm not specifying a year, not specifying anybody's name. I'm not looking for an individual. I just wanna know you were born in Greece and you lived in Carbon County, Utah, 1940. That's the only criteria. If I do that particular one, I find out that, hey, I get 486 people out of that. And now that I've done this for a while, that's way too many to work on. That's about, you know, that's about uh, 200 hours to, to complete that. So, no, so you're gonna pick a smaller community. You know, maybe uh, you know, Castledale, a little, little teeny town, a mining town or something. You know, for example, if I, if I pick Bingham Canyon, so the miners that were still left in 1940 living up there by Bingham Canyon, now I get 65 people much more manageable, you can do that in a half a week. Um, which ones do I want? 
Now this is where if you're looking for an individual, you'd start going through those records and say, okay, have I got my family name in here somewhere? You know, I, am I related to uh, Angelo, uh, Nick Flores? Well, by the way, I am, related, I am related to Nick Flores, it turns out, Flageris at one point. Um, and then, anyway, these names, they're which ones do you want? Well, when you're doing a community tree, you say, I want all of them. I'm gonna do all 65 of them. And uh, when I mean do them, what I'm gonna do is go through a series to find all the records attracted to that particular person or family. Now, the first thing I do, so I've got, a, I've got the guy off the list, uh, James McGrackis, McGrackis. This is terrible, I do not speak English, do not speak uh, Greek. So I, I will clobber these names, I'm sorry. Uh, Kornakis was our name and now they call it Curtis, they can't pronounce it, so. But that's actually not a separate thing. Anyway, uh, I want to check to see if the name is already in the tree. That's the first thing I do. So I don't have any extra duplicates. Um, then I go to the census record, see whether or not there was a transcription error in making those uh, in the name spellings, because these were not common names to the people filling out the census records. And so it was important to check and see whether, you know, hey, the guy's name really wasn't Bob. They didn't have any Bobs. This was, you know, it would have, it would have been something else. Anyway, so we have those kind of things. We are checking the names of the spelling. And then you, can, I, you do a, a search, and of course it's so easy because you've already got the information started. It fills in for you automatically, and it starts searching all the other records uh, for that person. If, there's a, if that person has not already been in the your tree, then you start adding them. That's pretty well... Uh, again, it's, it's much easier now to do that. You end up with a, a record that has a single source proving that this guy, James Backrackus, lived in 1940 census record as a source proving that he existed. I have no other information about him yet. So you can push on the button here, search on ancestry, and uh, sure enough, it starts finding records. All kinds of records that may or may not be associated with James McRackett. And that's where you come in and you get to say, okay, is this really the, the right guy? 1930 census record, how about this find a grave? Is this the right one? How, how about the date so they line up with what I know about this guy? And that's where you are going through, you know, and you first find out, is the name spelling still make sense? Are there other records with that same spelling? If there was no other record with that same multiple, if there aren't multiple records with that same spelling, I start questioning whether the census record spelled it right, because they make lots of mistakes in that. In this case, then, yeah, there are lots of records of Jane Mack records. There are, you know, it's gonna be good. And I start then adding more information from these different records into the database. Um, other records have special information. Some, you know, some of them are, uh, take, take you more time because there's more information to put in there. You know, like these uh, naturalization records, they're really great. Uh, finding stuff about the name and the birth and the family, uh, I'm sorry, the ship, family names of, the, of his wife, et cetera, when they arrived, their occupation. In this case, he was a dairyman. Dairy man. And so you put that information in. You keep adding the information for all these records that come in until, until there's no more information about that person. Um, sometimes they don't give you good dates. They don't provide a birth date, for example, or a birth location, but if you could, I do estimate, but I document when I estimate, and I, I use the words before and after, so I'm not, I'm not saying something's not true, but if I know the person got married, in 1920, I can say, well, they were born before 1908. Uh, you know, my before 19, I subtract 12 before, before 1908. So the, they were at least 12 years old when they got married. I mean, I, I say that because if I don't have, if I don't keep adding dates, and I've got too many people with the same names, because we happen to use the same names over and over again in the Greek community, I gotta have some dates to separate this Maria or this Sophia from this Sophia over here. Um, so, so you do, I do do that, but I document the source of this, the date. So in this case, you know, I say this guy, this lady, his wife, 
died before 1938. What was that based on? Because his record, his naturalization record, said he was a widower. He was a widower, okay. The record was 1938 record, so she died sometime before 1938. That, that kind of stuff really adds to the mining of information off of the records, and you want to pull off as much as you can. You know, the, the ship records, uh, Georgia talked about some of these, great information, and you keep confirming more and more the, and live the life of this person based on the records that are available. In this case, the, uh, he, he applied again for naturalization. Um, now it shows he's changed the spelling of his name. When he originally came, it was with a V, Mavrakis, and now it's with a K. And it says in there, okay, I came into this country under the name of such and such. I'm now known as such and such. So it's extremely important. My name, I couldn't find my own grandfather's records, his marriage record. How come? Well, I, if I do a search on Koronakis, it doesn't exist. He's not there. Um, our name got changed from Koronakis to Chorus to Curtis. If I don't know that name change, I don't get to make any, I, I can't use the computer to do searches. And I can't provide information to other people to, to help me do my, my uh, I mean, to pass on that information to my kids. So we need that, we need to document that name change. Um, in this case, they didn't have a location of his birth, but it told me where he last lived in Greece it's not quite as good, but it's a, it's a good thing to tell me, okay, this guy was at this location in this village in Greece at some time. That's an important piece of information, so I'll, I'll put that in. Again, just kind of mining whatever information I can get out of the uh, record. Uh, death records, particularly obituaries, um, you start finding the extended family names and the spouses. You know, he is survived by Bill, who's married to Susan, uh, Susan Weber or whatever else. And so and all of a sudden you've got, you've got some names that, I'm sorry, just the other way around. He is survived by Susan married to, you know, Tom Paulos. So now all of a sudden I've got a, I've got a, combo, a, a link to a, two different families together. And that's, that becomes golden to me because then all of a sudden I can start linking these families that otherwise are in my database as separate family trees. I want to start linking those family trees together. The, uh, I, I say that, now you start saying, well, I'm never gonna write my obituary that way because it changes. But that's, all, we've got all kinds of information. It also tells you who the grandchildren were and you start tracking, ah, I've got to look for a bill down further. I've got to look for a, uh, you know, an Alicia down further. So that that information becomes good. You know, in this case, uh, I find out the name of his father and his mother, which I didn't have before, you know, from the cemetery record, uh, Catherine Ferrancos. Also notice that he, he died of an automobile accident. A little piece of information uh, that might be helpful for someone uh, and, and important to know. Now, maybe not so much that he died in an automobile accident, but, well, he died in the war or he died in, uh, you know, he died skydiving or something. Well, whatever might be interesting to the, to the kids and grandkids later. Um, World War I draft registration, in this case I, I know where he lived in 1918. Why? Because that's when the record was filled out and it shows what his residence is at that time. And so you, you add that information. So by the time I've gone through all those records, I've got a pretty well documented, lots of records that are attached, you know, saying who this person is. I've also got his names in different ways because now here's Here's his Greek name, Demetrius Andreas Mavrakis, but now he's known on the records here as James Andrew Mavrakis. Okay, so I've got that bridge between what the Greek name's gonna be over across the pond and what the, what the records are here in the United States. The, um, uh, but, so, uh, so what do I do after I do that? I go and do it for all the other people in his family. So that now, I've got, so I've got some family members here, a wife and parents, and I do the same record checks for all them. Now, if they had a bunch of children, and you know, a number, a number of the Greeks have larger families, and sure enough, you get some of these 
oh, here's, here's seven children. And so you go do that same thing for all seven of those children and the children's spouses and the, and the grandchildren now. And so you may be working on that same family line, you know, maybe a couple hours, three hours, trying to just collect the information that's publicly available. Um, and then after you finish that, you go back to your original list of 65 people. And now you only have 64 left and you can go from there. Okay, it, it is a labor of love because uh, you do find out that um, every once in a while, you find a record that says, oh hey, this, this record's already been saved in your database. It's already been saved to this person. Well, I was doing a work on, okay, this is the Drosses, I'm sure, uh, Bill Dross. This is, uh, we have a name, uh, Vanzilla Drosopolis. And I'm saying, oh, but it's also, she's, uh, this record is assigned to Pangula Theophanopoulos. Well, it turns out, so one, a maiden name versus her married name. And again, I've got a link to link these two families together. And so this is where you get to celebrate. First, you, um, you make sure that it's the same person. And um, if it is the same pe person, then you get to merge the two profiles. And when you start merging the records, all of a sudden, all the records get brought in together, and now, and all the documentation gets brought in together to one record about that person. And I have combined, I have linked those two families. You've linked the families together, and happy, happy. And so it turns out that, so in, in my database right now, I've got multiple family trees, but wherever you see these little places here, those family trees are linked to other family trees. And, um, and so the family trees get to be a, uh, uh, an expansive database community tree of multiple families. Now, having, I've completed the carbon county, and when I say I, there's a, there's a group of us that work on this, including, you know, including Carol and, and Donna and, and uh, as Luke, Lucy, uh, in fact, one of the nice things about doing this is you can cl uh, collaborate with lots of people to help you do it, because someone might have an interest, you know, I'm really interested in that, you know, Sunnyvale mine. Let me do that precinct area and, and collect those records, and I'll, I'll, I'll track down the 50 people in that area. So by just doing Carbon County and then Bingham Canyon, we've got 10,000 people in this, in this community tree. Now, now, some of those people, yes, are, are in Salt Lake. Why? Because they were down in Carbon County, but you know, they've, some of them have left Carbon County or, they've, or their descendants have left Carbon County and have come up to Salt Lake. So it's not, you know, I, when I start doing Salt Lake, I will start having a lot of, oh, I've already found that record. It's already been there. So that, that's, that's part of the process. Other part of the, I'm sorry, out of that, this gives you an example of why it helps you as an individual. I can show how I'm linked, at least by marriage, to 1,200 of those 10,000. I don't know 10 Greeks uh, that I'm related to personally. I, you know, I, mean, I'm, I now have, I'd say, because I've been doing the Greek festival uh, that uh, as Carol was talking about. But, but you know, before I started this, I, you know, a handful of Greeks, I didn't, I didn't know that. All the ones I was related to, I didn't know. Now I can basically say, I bet you I'm related to, you know, at least half of you here. And I, you know, that, whether you want to admit that or not, I mean, that's up to you, but, but at least I might claim, you know, we might claim that. Um, enough so I would consider, let's change my name back to Corey's instead. Uh, and also, people start saying, hey, well, here's a, file, here's a picture of my grandpa. I want to put that in there. Here's a picture of the medal that he earned. Can I put that in there? Here's a little bio about that. Can I put that in there? Absolutely. Anything that you think is important, maybe important to your children or your grandchildren, put it in. Put it in and it will be permanently stay. You know, pictures of them in World War II, pictures of them when they actually still had hair. You know, what? whatever it might be that was interesting to you. Um, you know, this is the one of the six brothers of, of Mike, my grandfather, one of his brothers, he was the only one that came to Utah, but he went back to New York. Uh, and all the rest of them came out west. Um, and, but it's, you know, it's nice to tell his story. 
The, um, so the advantages of doing that community tree is that collaboration, working together, getting those other stories and photos and stuff. The intermarriage helps you link the families together to find families that you may not realize you're related to. Identifying those, those name changes and documenting those name changes so that you can, in fact, use computer searching, and uh, which was otherwise, it's impossible. As I said, I find out now that my grandfather used chorus. I can probably just spelled phonetically. Yeah, we, we no longer use Koranakis, we're just chorus. Everybody else used Caris, uh, but he phonetically spelled it K-O-R-A-S, and that's why I couldn't find his, his military record or his uh, uh, marriage record. Um, why they change it to Curtis? I mean, for heaven's sakes. Well, he was, he had a dairy. And it was doing fine selling to the Greek restaurants, but he could not sell to an American restaurant, anything but the Greek restaurants. The discrimination was so bad back then. If you, if you wanted to sell to the American restaurants, to a non-Greek restaurant, he picked an English name that has nothing to do with our ancestry. So we went from Curtis to Curtis. And so, and we're, we have to live with that shame even now. But that's all right. I mean, for, uh, that's, uh, uh, so I've got the history of the name. That's a history I want my kids to know. So by golly, put it in the document, put it into the database. You know, in this case, this is a database in Family Search. You know, they're working together so much now, we, the, you know, the records are in combination. And anyway, it's, it's in both as things go. It'll, it'll both last forever as far as I'm concerned. Um, add what you want remembered. If you want something remembered, put it in there. This community tree, you know, just like the, uh, will outlast all the, the, the vaults uh, or the, the monuments that you might be able to create. Um, with that, I'm, I'm done, except to say, you know, last, working at the festival is fun. I really enjoy it. I had a, a, one, of the, one of the people come up to me, uh, you know, and he said, my grandfather was a priest that traveled with uh, St. Nectorius in Greece. And he got he starved to death during the, the German occupation of Greece. Um, I want him remembered. I want to put that in. My father had a radio station, and he would secretly, you know, transmit the, uh, the German movement, the troop movements. He was given the, the Greek National Medal of Honor for hiding 100 families, uh, Jewish families, and and uh, saving their lives. He too starved to death during the uh, occupation. I wanna, I wanna keep those records. What can I do? Do you have a place to do it? And I'm saying, yes, you do have a place to do it. And I, and I think we have an obligation to put those in. We're not asking for much more than, you know, you've got some pictures of people, you've got a little bio about somebody, something of interest, you know, or just plain, here's a picture of the ranch we grew up on, or the sheep ranch we had, or whatever. You know, there's place in it. It doesn't cost anything to put 10 pictures in, five pictures in. If it's an important picture to you, that's the criteria. And uh, thank you, that's all I need.